you doing, doing, man? I'm doing well. You're doing great. Happy to be here. Yes, thank you. Having a good New York Comic Con. You said this is your Comic Con. This is I this I mean this is my hometown Mm -hmm. and uh, you're wearing your Jeremy Lin jersey. I'm wearing my Jeremy Lin jersey. Number seven. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this is the first con I ever went to as a pro. Uh, The first con I ever tabled at. The first New York Comic Con was my very first con. What year was that? 2006, maybe? Look at how far you've maybe come. Maybe 2005? Yeah, you know. Look it's, how far I, we've I, all I, come. Look how, look how luxurious my beard look has become. Beard and, beard. and how gray my point, temple has become. Gotta point that out. But Guys, if you have questions for Greg, please send them. Use the hashtag MarvelNYCC. But Greg, you're writing totally awesome, Hulk. Yes. It's going really well. Yeah. About a year in now? Yeah, yeah. We just, uh, issue 10 just hit. How's it been? How's the first year been? What have you learned? What have you enjoyed? What it's, have you experienced? It's been nuts. You know, yeah. it's been it's been amazing. Uh, I, it's so totally, totally awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is the uh, it's uh, so we got Amadeus chose the new Hulk, mm-hmm. and he is a uh, 19 year old kid who thinks he knows everything. Yep. thinks he's uh, he's going to be the best Hulk ever, and of course he's got a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. So we're into we're we're approaching that got a lot to learn stage of the story, <laughs> you know. So so uh, um, things are getting serious right now. He is uh, hunting Clint Barton. Yeah. Um, for uh, uh, for reasons uh, which you know what I'm just going to tell you. Clint Barton killed Bruce Banner. Oh my Shocking. God! All right. Horrifying. Spoilers, guys. Spoilers, Spoilers on Civil War 2. There you go. He's also uh, going up uh, against Black Panther. Exactly. Which has been really cool to see that kind of like battle of wits, two of yeah. the smartest guys in the Marvel Universe. Exactly. And, uh, you know, when you think about who could take on the Hulk, Black Panther has the, the, the brain power to take on yeah. Amadeus, and he's got the, the know-how and the gadgetry and, uh, and the technology to take on the Hulk. I love seeing uh, the Black Panther Hulkbuster armor. <laughs> that was a cool Where Did you come up with yeah, that? Yeah, well, yeah, I came up with the idea, and then Mike Del Mundo designed it. Yes. He just killed it. You yeah. know? So he, he, it's this kind of like giant, chunky panther, you yeah. know? so it's, it's amazing. What have you learned about Amadeus as a character uh, this run? I mean, you've written him oh, for yeah. years, but this is a totally yeah. new incarnation. That's a great. That's a great question. You Thank know, you. Um, I'm I, known for this. I appreciate yeah. your thoughtfulness. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you. <laughs> we appreciate each other. All right. That's what we're trying to say. Mutual appreciation. There you go. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, what I've learned about Amadeus is that um, he. I, I've I've learned what kind of Hulk he is. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Uh, Banner is a Hulk who's driven by anger. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's, like, it just the, the, the conditions of his childhood. He had a horrible childhood. I won't go into the details. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Mantlo and Peter David are amazing writers yeah. who both built up his, his, really his past. It. Uh, yeah, incredibly. Um, uh, and, uh, and that left him with this terrible anger that he's always trying to push down, but that comes boiling over. Um, Amadeus, uh, you know, yes, Amadeus' parents are dead because he's a Marvel hero. Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> but, um, but he... Uh, <laughs> He, um, his childhood was not he's, not, he's not a survivor of abuse the way Banner was. Right. He has a different kind of childhood. He's a good childhood, a supportive childhood. Yeah, exactly. His parents were great. He's, and he's always been, you know, the smartest kid in the room. Mm-hmm. He thinks, he, he has a very high opinion of himself. And the more I worked on this, the more I realized, you know what, his, 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 uh, his trigger is pride. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he is, he, he, really he, he thinks too much of himself and that yeah. that's what's going to get into trouble. And, and if that pride gets challenged, that like there are, that, that's where he's going to enter danger territory. That's where he becomes very dangerous as the Hulk when he yeah. is trying to catch up in that kind of a way when he thinks he's, uh, when he's been shown up in some ways. Yeah. So, um, and you know, he gets called out on that uh, and uh, some interesting things will result. Well, I was going to mention, speaking of the calling out, I love, one of the aspects of the book I love is his relationship with his sister, oh, yeah. Maddie, who's a key supporting player. And really, you gave him a supporting cast for the first time. Uh, where did that decision come from, and how has it paid off? Yeah, well, way back when, when uh, Fred Van Lente and I were co-writing the uh, Incredible Hercules yes, storyline, where... Just uh, a great, oh, great Thank book. you, thank you. So Check it out on Marvel Unlimited. There you go. Um, Amadeus, uh, you know, was the co-star of that whole storyline, and we had this whole plan that we were going to reveal his sister, mm-hmm. um, Madame Curie, Maddie Love Cho, it. Love you it. know, so they had very aspirational names yeah. given to them by very, uh, by very aspirational parents. Um, but, uh, you know, and so we weren't able to actually work Maddie into that storyline back mm-hmm. in the day. But um, for this one, it just made sense. I wanted to have, um, I, I, I just love the idea of Amadeus having this younger sister uh, kind of kicking his butt throughout, you know what I mean? Because he's always That's going great. too far. When he becomes the Hulk, he, I mean, he's, he's, he has zero, zero self-control to begin with. Mm-hmm. And so when he's the Hulk, it's even worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's, she's this great kind of, uh, 
a younger sister who knows better. Uh, and it's just a really fun dynamic. I think I was probably inspired a bit by, I mean, I remember back in the day reading uh, Catcher in the Rye and the Holden Caulfield Phoebe, Phoebe relationship, oh, nice. you know, how he's got this much more sensible younger sister. Wow. So that's probably. This guy is smart, guys. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, oh, Greg Clark knows his book learning. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of uh, relationship. But there's, a, there's, you know, that, that uh, I love, I, I don't see that many brother sister things mm -hmm. in comics too, you know yeah. what I mean? And so, uh, but it was a blast bringing Maddie in. And, um, but yeah, big stuff is happening with that though. Because yeah. Amadeus is uh, pushing the envelope in some big ways during the course of the storyline. And, you know, Maddie's, Maddie's always been, you know, on his tail about stuff, but he may go too far. And yeah. what happens when he goes too far? You know what the other time uh, Catcher in the Rye has been referenced in terms of Marvel is? When's that? J.D. Salinger's son who played Captain America in 1990. Are you serious? Look it up. <laughs> it happens. Rubber ears on the mask. That's Greg, awesome. getting back to you. Yes. Um, you've had a year of kind of getting to keep the Hulk to yourself. You know, it was really you were you were writing the book and bringing in people from the outside. But now he, as you had Civil War two, play a role. Yep. And he, as of this week, is one of the champions. Yes. How does that affect how you write the character? Are you going to be working with Mark Wade? Are you going to yeah. be kind of? Coordinating, how's that all work? Yeah, so we traded notes uh, early on when Mark uh, started working on the champions, mm -hmm. and I, I gave him this big brief about, you know, he asked, like, you know, d he, he kind of wanted to know, like, what the deal was, mm -hmm. you know, f sort of straight from the horse's mouth. So I uh, wrote up a big thing for him and all that. And um, and so the, the editors are really keeping track of everything and making sure that the storylines mm -hmm. don't, you know, conflict and that they help each other. And I've read the first uh, few issues of the champions, and it's awesome. Yeah, it's the first uh, issue. Was great. Yeah, yeah. And, and the same thing happened when Amadeus uh, showed up in uh, Moon Girl and Devil dinosaur sure. you know so he's he's popped up in a number of books and i love it i mean that's kind of the highest praise sure. you can get when that's the beauty uh, of it, a shared universe getting to see your own creation yeah. used by other people exactly it's just amazing so uh and it's been a lot of fun so people are people are digging into him so it's yeah. been good uh, one of the kind of recurring things is his mission to collect these giant monsters. Yep. Uh, that seems to be recurring in the book as mm -hmm. you go through other stuff. Well, that is that all leading somewhere? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'll say no more. So coy. <laughs> so coy. All right, flipping that, I want to talk to you about, we were just talking before we came on the air about the issue you had drawn up by the great Alan Davis. Yes. Uh, incredibly emotional issue. Basically the send-off to Bruce Banner before yeah. he got spoilers killed in um, <laughs> Civil War II. You, of course, worked for years on the Hulk. Mm -hmm. What was it like to say goodbye to that character and getting the opportunity to say goodbye to Yeah, that no, I was, it was amazing. They, um, I mean, they, they told me about eight months, yeah, six or eight months ahead of time, you know, wh what the plan was with sure. Banner. And so it gave us time to plan a lot and uh, do these send-off issues. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I love that character. You right. know, I mean, Bruce Banner is one of those characters that I've just for whatever reason, I've just connected with from the beginning. He was always my favorite Marvel character mm -hmm. from well, the time I was a little kid. And um, so to have the chance to dig in and do these sort of right. like, I love you, Bruce, issues. Right. You, you know, had to do the totally awesome Hulk, and you also did the Fallen one. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, and, you know, and, and I've, lo I've grown to love that whole supporting cast, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we got to do an issue that, that uh, where everybody kind of, we got everybody's sort of reaction to his, uh, we got a number of characters in there who got to kind of, without knowing it, say goodbye, mm -hmm. you know, because it was before what happened to him happened to him. And then, and then in the fallen issue, we get to see how his death uh, reverberates through everybody and also how he cared for them. I mean, I think that was the big thing about Banner is that, you know, we think of him as a loner, Hulk, you know, Hulk just wants to be alone, yeah. you know, just leave Hulk alone. But Banner also, uh, He's he's got this huge supporting cast. Yeah, he's got a family. A family. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that's the that's the thing about him. He always felt this huge connection and responsibility to all the people around him and his in this family. Only some of them are who are actually blood relatives, mm -hmm. but that I think that family connection, and and the way he has cared for his family is is a big part of what makes him a hero. And um, and there's a way in that fallen book where he even in death he takes care of folks. Mm -hmm. You know, we do, we do this thing with a kitchen timer. You know, just a little $5 kitchen timer that he gives everybody, you yeah. know, and he says, uh, you know, as depending on how I died, he leaves a message for folks, depending on how I died, I don't know what you're feeling, but one thing I've learned is just to take three minutes, mm -hmm. you know, before you do anything. And this is the guy who has, uh, you know, has the biggest anger issues of all, but he gives everybody this kitchen timer and you like crank that timer and you just wait three minutes. And, yeah. and, and that, that moment, being able to have that moment of quiet for these characters and, uh, that time to, pro I, it, it felt really good, mm -hmm. and I was 
hugely grateful to my editors and uh, you know for sort of getting you know su supporting that and and pushing for that those emotional moments it was one of those books where i'm typing i'm tearing up as i type you know what i mean like so it's it, uh, yes i'm very sensitive so what's coming um, up next in uh, totally awesome hole what can uh, you yeah. tease us with well, tantalize us i'm wearing this t-shirt not just because i am uh perhaps New York's greatest uh, Jeremy Lin fan. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but also because Jeremy Lin is going to co-star no in the Totally Awesome Hulk. Oh, my in God. Issue number 13 and issue number that. 14. I know. I, I'm springing this on you for yeah, the first time. This I'm, is news. <laughs> we got breaking news here on Marvel Live. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so Jeremy Lin, the uh, point guard for the Brooklyn Nets, is going to be uh, co-starring with uh, Amadeus Cho in uh, the, you know, the world's greatest Asian-American uh, sports hero and the world's biggest Asian-American superhero are going to be uh, uh, teaming up in, in uh, Totally Awesome Hulk 13 and 14. That's that very cool. uh, December and January, I think. Have you communicated with uh, with Jeremy? I have right? communicated with Jeremy's people. I haven't okay. communicated directly with Jeremy yet. Well, soon no, he's going to have to get in touch with you now exactly. you've made him a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Greg, before we let you go, where can people uh, follow you online? Yeah. Where can they find you on social media? Right. Where can they hear more about what's up? With Greg Pock. <laughs> uh, my website is just gregpock.com. That's G-R-E-G-P-A-K.com. And I'm also just Greg Pock on Twitter, G-R-E-G-P-A-K. Oh, yeah, and then there's the Instagram thing. Instagram. That's a new yeah, that's that's a thing a, that's happening the to kids, people now. Kids like it, apparently. Love it. It's uh, Greg Pock Picks, P-I-X. Very uh, cool. Greg, thanks for joining us. Guys, do check out Totally Awesome Hulk. We're going to be taking you to a tour of the Square Enix booth coming up next. We've got a lot of guests still to come. We've got a lot of news still to come. If you've missed anything, be sure to go to marvel.com slash NYCC2016. Check out our live vlogs. Check out our pictures. Check it all out. And we're going to be back here with more great guests. But like I said, first up, it's going to be the Square Enix booth tour right here on Marvel Live, New York Comic Con 2016. And nudity.